Welcome to This One Thing with Carrie Kenyon Dern. One verse, one truth, one choice. Hello and welcome once again to This One Thing. I'm Carrie Kenyon Dern and I'm so grateful to have you here with me today. I'm also grateful to have my very dear friend Melina Puente back here with us today. Melina, thank you so much for coming back. So glad to be here, Carrie. So last week we were in Romans 8 verse 11 and I asked you to come back so we could look at Romans 8 15 this week and I'm going to go ahead and read Romans 8 verse 15 and then I'd like to hear the truth that you want to pull out of this verse for us Melina. Romans 8 15 says so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves instead you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. So this verse has a whole lot in it. And last week we talked about life in the spirit, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we're talking about that spirit being made alive in us so that we can have a relationship with God. We can actually call him Abba Father. So Melina, as you read Romans 8, 15, what's the truth that comes to your heart and mind? First thing that popped out to me, Carrie, was... In 14, the verse right above it, when it says that those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, and as it leads into not being a fearful slave, but it boiling down to my identity. And the truth I pulled out of that is that I am a child of God. I When I gave my life to Jesus, that was the stamp that is who I am. So this word Abba is Aramaic. And it's obviously Aramaic for father. So we've got Abba, which is Aramaic. And then we've got the word father, which is the Greek word, right? And it's patir. So you've got Aramaic and you've got Greek words back to back in this verse. And a lot of times people can be what I would consider a little bit flippant with this word Abba. And they say, well, that's just Aramaic for daddy or papa. And it's a term of endearment. It's a warm, friendly, he's my papa. And part of that is true, but there's so much more in this meaning of Abba that we really need to know and understand to apply it accurately to our lives and our relationship with God. So this word Abba, it's Aramaic for father, and it means two things. It means intimacy. I am a child and I have intimacy with God because I am his. Like you said, it's an identity. I belong to him. There's intimacy there. But this word Abba also means obedience. The Mm. literal translation from the Aramaic is, Father, I will obey you. So I can only call out to God as Abba if I am first his child and second obedient to him as a father, as his child. So it's really important that as we're looking at this verse, as as you helped us already to do in context, you're saying in verse 14, the spirit of God testifies that I am his child. He is my yes. father. Yes. Verse 15, because he is my father, I am now no longer a fearful slave. I have been adopted. I have a spirit of adoption. It's a, a spirit of sonship, adoption. I have been bought with the blood of Jesus into the family of God. I am no longer a slave. I am no longer afraid. Yes. I am a full heir and I am fully loved. Amen. Right? Not a slave, full child, full heir, not fearful. What's the opposite of fear? Love, right? First John chapter four says perfect love destroys fear. So now I am not afraid. I am not a fearful slave because he loves me. And because when I call on him as Abba father, I know that I am saying, father, I will obey you. The context of this chapter preceding this verse, just like we were in last week, it's all about life in the spirit. It's all about because I am now filled to the fullest with the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, I can and will be obedient, calling out Abba Father. To further put this verse in context, Melina, I would like to read the verses that follow it. Verses 16 and 17. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. 
But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. And what does that remind you of there? Nothing more than the blood of Jesus itself yes. could show us so clearly what this verse is talking about, right? Mm -hmm. We share in his glory as Jesus did, but Jesus suffered to the point of the cross. And he's saying, if you're going to be my child, you will be obedient to me and you will be willing to suffer. And that's going to look different for all of us. But in really focusing this week on verse 15, I think this one thing, I think I agree with you for the truth. This is really about identity. This is really about knowing because of the spirit, because of the completed work of Jesus, I am assured in this whole chapter, but if we take where we started last week, all the way up to verse 17, our verse is right in the middle of that. The work of the Spirit, the work of Jesus, all come together to prove to me in my flesh, because of God's Spirit in me, I belong to Him. Amen. And because I belong to Him, that now becomes my identity. Right? Yes. So let's unpack this a little bit more. Let's move into some personal application Share with me when you first experienced this and then kind of use your personal life experience to help our listeners make a choice. How can we choose to apply this to our lives? This whole idea of sonship, of adoption, of calling out to him as Abba Father. Okay, now we know the truth of this verse is I belong. I am his child. That's my identity. Now, what do I do with that? What's my choice, Melina? I would say the first time I experienced even struggling with identity before I met and gave my life to Jesus, I was playing basketball at Chico State. I loved it. That was that was what I, when people said, what do you do? I play basketball at Chico State or I'm a student at Chico State. I just was always, what did I do? That was who I was. Years later, gave my life to Jesus. And now I had to decide what was my identity because I had to embrace what was true, which was I am a child of God, but I was still struggling with that performance piece of, am I a daughter? Am I a student? Am I a teacher? Am I a friend? Like all those other areas in my life and wanting to embrace the truth that I am the beloved. And as the beloved, and it's been a lot of years of healing for me to get to this place where I don't perform, I don't have to pretend to be anything else other than a child of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so powerful, Melina. And the thing that really jumps out for me, I want to jump on top of your illustration there of finding your identity in him instead of basketball. The word that always jumps out for me the most here in verse 15 is adopted, mm -hmm. when he adopted you. And we adopt other identities, until we really experience being adopted by him, right? So oh, you had adopted good. basketball as your identity, right? Yes. And then you no longer had that. And then you experienced his adoption. And that means you're, you're part of the family. You're all in. So as a counselor, I see the ruin, the wreckage, the turmoil, the crisis that abandonment causes in hearts and lives of men and women. And often I will work all the way back to their relationship with their mother or their father and will uncover together through the power of the Holy Spirit that they were abandoned, maybe not physically, but emotionally by one or both parents. Mm -hmm. And it's just so powerful the way the enemy uses that abandonment in our lives to convince us of a myriad of things, but usually that we're not lovable, that there's something deeply intrinsically wrong with us. Oftentimes, people that have a lot of abandonment in their past, they will have a very difficult time being successful in long-term relationships, and they believe that they need to abandon before they are themselves abandoned. So they'll abandon other people that love them or care for them. So I really, as a counselor, I zero in on this word adoption because I believe that that is the cure through the power of the Holy Spirit to the abandonment that so many of us have experienced. Maybe our mother and our father didn't abandon us. Maybe a friend that we really cared about abandoned us. Sometimes we feel abandoned by people that we love that pass away and go to heaven before before we're ready for them to. I work with a lot of people who know that their loved ones who have passed on are not 
intentionally abandoning them, but they're still feeling this profound sense of abandonment. So it's very important that we take this passage quite literally and apply it to our lives. Mm. So I want to say that's the choice that we need to make is to say this verse right here, verse 15 or verse of the week says, now we call him Abba Father. Why do we do that? We do that It says, because we have received God's spirit. When he adopted us as his children, we received his spirit. The way it's worded, it sounds to me like a natural response to receiving his spirit, to being adopted, is to call out Abba Father, to call him Abba Father. Yes. Now, I already mentioned earlier that to call him Abba Father, I must first belong to him. That means I've said yes to Jesus. I am his son or I am his daughter. And it also means that I am not willfully in sin or rebellion, that I'm not intentionally doing my own thing and ignoring the principles and the passages of scripture that very clearly show me what my life in the spirit should look like. So I put on that spirit of adoption by calling out Abba Father. And this is actually something that I do with clients where I'll say to them in times of healing prayer, just put your hands on your heart. It's a reminder to get out of your head, right? This is not an intellectual exercise. This is you remembering what we talked about last week, Melina, you have the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead inside of you. I remember it better when my hands are on my heart. That's just me. Like, I know you're in there. I can't (laughs) feel you right now, but Romans 8, 11 that we looked at last week promises me that I'm filled with the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So if I can't feel it, if I'm feeling abandoned, I put my hands on my heart and I practice this. Abba, I belong to you. Abba, I will obey you. Abba, I belong to you. What is that doing, Melina? It's giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to break through that lie of abandonment, yes. right? Yes. And, and again, we, we talked about this weeks ago. We, we kind of started at the end. We started in Romans 8 <laughs> in the last verse weeks ago, right? We did Romans 8, 39, and they were like, oh, let's come back in. We jumped in in verse 11. Now we're in verse 15. And so we started out, you know, with this whole picture of love destroying fear And then last week we talked about the very beginning of the chapter talks about the condemnation has now been replaced with the worth and the value that we have in Jesus Christ. And what more proof of that do we need that he's filled us with the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead? Amen. So the big three that we all struggle with, condemnation, abandonment, and fear are all obliterated in this one chapter in Romans chapter eight. Yes. But right here in verse 15, the spirit of adoption that we are claiming and proclaiming over ourselves in prayer, it happens like this. Abba, I belong to you. Abba, I will obey you. Abba, I belong to you. You know, my sister and her husband, my sister Connie, the sister just younger than me, they live in Texas and they've raised their children to say, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. And, you know, we live in California, so kids don't really say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. But I'm always struck when I'm around her children by the extreme respect that they operate in for their parents. As I've been meditating on this passage, I can't think of a better example of what our posture should be with our Heavenly Father than Connie's kids, because they adore their parents. There's so much intimacy, there's so much friendship, there's so much love and laughter and playfulness. So there's definitely that spirit there of, I belong to you, but there's also this, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, I will obey you immediately with no talking back and no disrespect. And that is what this word, Abba, Father, means. It's I know that you are in the rightful place of my heart and and life. You are the supreme authority. I will obey you. I will respect you. But at the same time, I'm your kid and I am safe and I know who I am and who I am is yours. That's my identity. Amen. 
So Melina, do you have any other thoughts for us as we meditate on this passage and we look at this whole concept of we were fearful slaves, but now we've received God's spirit. So because we have received God's spirit, which means we are adopted, now we just call out. It just comes out of our spirit, Abba Father. Do you have any final thoughts for our listeners this week? I want to just share that in operating in that beloved place, that child of God identity, for me, I can embrace the joy and the peace that comes with my daily job or a meeting with my friends. And that is the fruit of claiming that identity of child of God. I think when I perform, there's not joy, there's no peace. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I love that. Okay, well, I think we should pray now, Melina. I think we should all just take this cue, Mm. right? Right right here in Romans 8, it's saying, now we call him. It's an expectation that we're calling him this. And sometimes I read this and I'm like, shoot, I haven't been doing that lately. It's not saying, well, you should. It's saying we do. And so we should be because... The scripture is just expecting that we are already calling out to him, Abba, Father. It's not just daddy, give me what I want. It's this precious daddy, Papa, coupled with the yes, sir, I will obey you. Father, I acknowledge who you are first and foremost, and I will obey you. And it's in acknowledging who you are and proclaiming that I will obey you that I absolutely know who I am. That is where my identity is found, is in knowing who you are, not just in my life, but over all of creation, your sovereignty, your bigness, your faithfulness, your goodness, your justice, all that you are, I find who I am in knowing you. So let's pray, Melina, and let's make this choice together with our listeners, and let's continue to make this choice throughout this next week. And I do want to spend just one more week, I promise, just one more week in Romans (laughs) chapter 8. I mean, this is a big old chapter, and it's just like so meaty theologically. I just can't stop with it. So one more week, I really want to do Romans 8.26 next week. Can we just do one more week? That sounds great. All right. Thank you. I I twisted your arm. I I could feel that. I just twisting on your arm there just a little bit. All right. One more week in Romans 8. Next week, we'll do verse 26. But let's close in prayer. Let's go ahead and apply this powerful scripture, Romans 8, 15 in prayer. Father God, I thank you that we have not received a spirit that makes us fearful slaves. We have received your spirit. You have adopted us as your own children. And now, Father God, we want to respond to you by calling you Abba, Father. Father, we will obey you. And Father, I pray for all of us right now. Every man, every woman listening to this podcast, I pray for Melina. I pray for myself. I pray that we would all, like children, just put our hands on our heart to remember that you are the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead inside of us. You are with us now. You are praying for us now. And I pray, Father God, in the quietness of our car, of our home, of our kitchen, of our bedroom, wherever we are, in our office, wherever you find us in this moment, that we in childlike faith, with hands on our hearts, would say, Abba, I belong to you. Abba, I will obey you. Abba, I belong to you. Father, I pray that we would be men and women whose sole passion and desire is to know you more. Because in knowing you more and knowing you as our Abba Father, we know who we are. We are yours. Our identity is in you. We are found in you. And when we know you, we find ourselves in you. Abba, we belong to you. And you are more than enough to satisfy our hearts, to satisfy our needs, our desires, our longings, our loneliness, our desperation, our fear. 
Because as Abba, you destroy all of our fear. You destroy all of the condemnation and all of the abandonment in our lives. And I thank you for showing us this week that we are not fearful slaves. We have not been abandoned. That we can put on your spirit of adoption by calling out to you as Abba Father. And I pray that we would choose to do so this week and in the weeks ahead. And it is in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for This One Thing with Carrie Kenyon Dern. Find all our episodes by clicking the podcast link located on our website at fetterfree.org.